for the majority of the time uh, through the remainder of our videos, we're actually going to be working uh, in the search center finally, and we're going to be working with various different web parts within the search center. So welcome back to our SharePoint Anonymous uh, demo site, and uh, let's do this. We've already built out a, a search center in a previous uh, video, so let's just jump right into that. So this is our nonprofit search center, and this is the default layout that you'll you'll get right off the back on the uh, enterprise search center. And you'll notice that you have a couple tabs, one for all sites, one for people. And what you'd be able to eventually do is build out additional tabs for various different scopes if you wanted to. But let's do a query and jump into our search center. So this is the standard search center experience that you're going to get uh, out of the box. You'll notice that you'll have 10 results per page. If you had, um, if you had a lot of results, you'd be able to go between pages within your search result set. And there's a couple key components that you'll find around the, around the page. Everything here is built with what we call web parts. And web parts are essentially the building blocks of SharePoint. They're different components that you can plug in, customize, style, to drive different experiences for your users. So in SharePoint 2010, we have a couple of very essential ones here on the Search Center that we're going to be able to work with the rest of the time throughout this video series. The one you'll notice right off the back is the search refiners web part or what was called fast faceted search if you were used to using other search engines and what this is essentially allowing you to do is every time you do a search it will go out it will pull values based off of various different categories that you've set up so initially it's going to pull back values for things like result type site author modified date We've noticed, though, I did build out a column in the managed uh, manage metadata column in my document library for document type. And I've actually titled this document type MMS or Manage Metadata Services so you know where that content is coming from. Those Any of those columns that you build in your uh, document libraries as a managed metadata column are going to com come back here automatically as a search refiner. And we'll get into that in more detail as we dive into search refiners. So there's various different zones on the page. Uh, you have your left zone, your right zone, um, upper middle zones, and there's web parts that are placed in each one of these. This zone right here is containing your search results, standard search results web part. So instead of just showing you this from the front end, let's do something maybe you haven't done if you've just worked with the front end before. Let's actually edit the page and look at the web parts. So we'll notice that I can check out pages, I can edit web parts within the page, notice that I can put them in various different zones on the page. And again, these are just building blocks that we're going to build out our, our search UI and our search user experience with. You'll see the refinement web part there on the left, and your search core results web part, which is obviously one of the most essential web parts on this page. One of the things we'll get into later is customizing uh, the search best bets web part. One of the things I want to show you right here is just that all these are moving pieces. So I could take this search best bets web part, and if I didn't want it to be below that blue line on my page, maybe I wanted it to be uh, just under my search box, I could move that web part up so that best bets actually appear right under my search box. Not really the look and feel that I, I'm really preference to, but, uh, but you can move things around like that. I can also add additional web parts to this page. So say over on the right hand side, I wanted to add a federated search web part, something we'll look at in another video. I could click add a web part. And I have a whole gallery of web parts up here and these are broken down into various different categories. And I could add, I could go to search and I could do a federated search results web part. And I just add that to that zone. By default, it's going to add it to the zone that I was clicking when I, I started this add a web part flow here. But I could add it into various different zones on that page. It's really just that easy. If I clicked add, it would add that federated search web part. What I'm also able to do is configure all of these web parts. In our next several videos, we'll look at various different ways of configuring those. But if I were to edit, say, the search refiner web part, I will get a view just like this. And the majority of our web parts have views that are very similar to this. They just have various different collapsible options for configuring a whole lot of different settings between each one of those, those web parts.
All the web parts, if you uh, dive into future uh, series on, uh, say, CSS, master page work, different types of styling work, um, XSLT, you can style these web parts to look and feel very, uh, very nice. You can make them look so they don't even look like SharePoint anymore. Uh, you find those examples around the web a whole lot. So anyway, this is an uh, introduction to the SharePoint search web part. Uh, I hope this gives you a little bit of foundation as we go through um, customizing some of these different components in future videos.